Assalamu alaikum. This is lecture four on modern control theory. Today we are going to discuss the solution of the state equation. Eventually that will lead to our output equation. So for that, uh, actually we'll be covering uh, two articles from chapter four. So chapter four of Control System Engineering by Nice, Norman S. Nice. So basically we'll be covering uh, 4.10 and uh, 4.11. Okay, so uh, hopefully uh, we, we can, uh, we have to go through into two different class. So today's class will be trying to cover 4.10, which is uh, slightly less mathematically involved, and 4.11 is slightly more mathematically involved. Okay, let's start. So basically, two methods are there uh, for finding the solution. Method one is uh, transfer function solution, or uh, basically the Laplace transfer uh, solution. So Laplace transform solution. <clears throat> and the other one is uh, time domain solution. Okay, so this is 4.10 and this is 4.11. Okay, let's start with the Laplace transform solution of the state equation. So whatever the equation we already have is x dot equal to ax plus bu and y equal to cx plus du. Now, if we take the Laplace transformation of the first equation, then what we get is SXS minus initial value x0 equal to AXS plus BUS. Okay, so We can take the uh, axis in one side. So S axis minus A axis, then take the initial value x zero to the other side. Uh, after a simplification, S i is the identity matrix minus uh, A axis. This is similar to whatever we have done uh, in the last class, in the derivation that we have done, while we actually trying to convert the state equation into a transfer function. So in that particular case, uh, for simplification, we assume that initial condition is zero, but this time we are, for the solution, we have to actually consider the initial condition. So we cannot omit x0. Okay, so find out the solution of xs is basically, I take the inverse matrix of si minus a, that is uh, multiplied with your x0 initial condition as well as the other parameter that we have, that is BU, so that one as well. Okay, now let us take the, so this will give out the state variable. So this is the solution of our state equation. And as we said that eventually our ultimate objective is to find out the output. So now you take 
Laplace transformation of uh, the output equation as well. So what you are going to get is Ys equal to Cxs plus Dus. Okay, so once we know the state equation, so simply we're going to replace the state equation into this one and eventually we'll try to figure out what is the value of our output y of s. So this is ultimate objective. So this one excess can be a bit more simplified like this, excess equal to, you can take common of si minus a inverse. Then we have x zero initial condition of the states then plus uh, B US. And as we know, we are actually going to use adjacent and determinant of SA minus A to figure out the inverse metric of SI minus A. So this will be our final state equation, solution of the state equation. And once we know, this solution, then we just put it here to find out what is the value of Ys. The ultimate objective is to calculate the output value. Okay, we are going to see one example to uh, figure out how to actually do the uh, solution of uh, state equation in the time domain. So before that, one of the thing that we want to figure out is there is uh, the characteristic of the solution is actually in the time in the frequency domain. In the frequency domain, what we say is the frequency domain, the characteristic of the response or the system response is being determined by the poles of the transfer function. So poles of transfer functions determines determines the response. You can also call system response. Okay. So the question here is, is there something similar in a state space representation? So state space representation, do you have something like that, that will determine the system response? Or behavior. Okay, so the answer is yes, we have something like that, and the thing is known as eigenvalue. Eigenvalue. Okay, so eigenvalue does the same thing, and eventually you are going to say, uh, see that uh, the eigenvalue of your state space representation is actually same as poles of the characteristic equation or the transfer function. Okay, so they are same. So more detail of this one will be actually discussed in, in your chapter five, uh, while we are discussing the chapter five, a portion of the chapter five. So, but just to introduce and how to find out the eigenvalues of uh, the system uh, of uh, state space representation. State space representation is basically finding the determinant of SI minus A. So determinant of SI, as you can see that determinant of SI minus A uh, will give you the eigenvalues. Eigenvalues and of your 
system matrix A. So eventually in turn, this is same as your poles of transfer function and eventually this will determine the characteristic equation. I think it is evident uh, because of the fact that in the last derivation that we have seen, ys by us, which was uh, t of s, is actually given something like this c uh, adjacent of si minus a divided by determinant of si minus a into b plus d. It was the uh, uh, the frequency, uh, the transfer function. If you want to achieve the transfer function from the state space, this was the case. So basically, as you can see here, if we take common, what we have is C adjacent SI minus A into B plus D determinant of SI minus A. But numerator, just uh, look, at the, uh, look at the numerator. In the numerator, one parameter is added. But more importantly, look at the denominator. Denominator is actually uh, determinant of SI minus A. So, uh, we know that determine, uh, the denominator is actually is the poles of the transfer function. So as you can see, this will give you the poles of your transfer function, which is same as the eigenvalues of your system matrix, values of system matrix A. Okay. So, more detail, inshallah, in the chapter five, but uh, we just try to figure out that is there any way to find out the system behavior. So, the way is basically to find the determinant of SI minus A. The solution of that one, uh, that is the determinant of SI minus A, if you place it to zero, so whatever the uh, values of the S you are going to get, they will give you actually your poles. Okay. Now, the tra Laplace transform solution of your uh, state equation and in turn the output solution. So, if you want to find out, let us uh, look at one example. Example. Okay, so example 4.11. So the transfer uh, state equation is given, it's uh, dot equal to 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, minus 24, minus 26, minus 9. So basically the one that we have derived in the last class. Now, uh, something new is given is your, uh, Input is given zero zero one to the power minus t, and your output equation is given y equal to one one zero x, and also initial conditions are provided x zero is one zero two. So what they want is to find out what is excess, what is excess, and in turn, what is uh, ys. Okay, so this is what we have to figure out. Okay, uh, basically, uh, more importantly, in the time domain. Okay, let us start, then we'll see uh, what we are going to get. So first thing first, we have to find out si minus s, so si minus a, so basically S times identity matrix, one, zero, 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 one, zero, 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 one. Then you have minus a is zero, one, zero, 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 one. Then we have uh, minus 24, minus 26, minus nine. So uh, what we're going to get is uh, S, minus one, zero, 
zero s minus one. The minuses are getting changed to plus, and the pluses are changing, becoming minus of your uh, matrix A. So basically, twenty four minus twenty six. Uh, sorry, minus zero plus. So then we have s plus nine. So this is our SI minus A. Then we have to find out uh, the adjacent and the determinant of SI minus A. So adjacent of SI, SI minus A is, we have to find out the coefficient of the H parameters. Then we have to take transpose of it. So eventually this is s square plus 9s plus 26 minus 24 minus 24s. Actually, we reviewed the idea in the last class, so that is where I'm just writing it directly. So your task is to verify whether I'm writing it correctly or not. So minus 26s plus 24. Then one s s square. So take the transpose. Eventually, it will become something like this: s square plus nine s plus twenty four twenty six minus twenty four minus twenty four s s plus nine s into s plus nine. Then minus twenty six s plus twenty four. 1s s square. So this is our uh, involves uh, the adjacent. Then also you have to find out the determinant. So determinant of si minus a. So basically s. We to find out the determinant of s minus one zero zero s minus one. 24, 26, plus 9. Okay, so, so this is S, uh, then plus multiply, then we will have S square plus, oh, sorry, multiply diagonally, so 9S plus 26 plus 24. Okay, so what we're going to get is s cubed plus 9s square plus 26s plus 24. So this is the determinant. Now we can say that our inverse matrix is uh, s i minus a inverse equal to the adjacent divided by the determinant of that matrix. So ultimately what we're going to have is S square plus 9S plus 26 minus 20. S plus 9, 1, then uh, 24 minus 24S into S plus 9. S the minus 24s minus 26s plus 24 s square. So this is our adjacent and also as the determinant in the denominator. So ultimately s q plus 9 s square plus 26s plus 24. Okay, so what our solution says is that what is the solution of our x or the state equation according to the derivation. So xs is s i minus a inverse, which we already calculated. Then we have x zero plus b us. Now, what is US? Basically, 
we are given that our input is e to the power minus t. So we are, uh, this is actually u t in the time domain. So we have to find out u s. So e to the power minus t basically nothing but one by s plus one delay by one. Okay, so b u, what will be our b u? What was our b? b was actually zero, zero, one. So we have b equal to zero, zero, one. And we have input u t was, uh, it is about minus t, which we converted to u s equal to one by s plus one. No. We, what will be u? So b u s, what will it will be? b u s is nothing but 0, 0, 1 into 1 by s plus 1. So we can easily say that we can write b u s 0, 0, 1 by s plus 1. Okay. So before keeping that value. So we just try to figure out what is the magnitude of this portion. Then we already know what is adjacent that determines. So we can do that simplification. So now x0 plus b us. So x0 is nothing but 102 and plus b us is 0, 0, 1 by s plus 1. So we can just add. So basically what we are going to have is one, zero, then two plus one by S plus one, and eventually one, zero. So if we take common, so S plus one, then two S plus two, so basically two S plus three. Okay, so now, find out the xs what we have to do is uh, we have to have adjacent of si minus a divided by the determinant of si minus a and then you have to multiply with that x0 plus b u of s. So you can just, uh, from now, you can just keep the determinant as it is. You just let us multiply two matrix, that is adjacent matrix, and the one that we figure out, x0 plus b u. Okay, so then we'll, find, we'll just derive that whole thing with the determinant. So let us multiply adjacent of Si minus a with x0 plus b u of s. So ultimately, this is square plus minus plus 26 minus 24 minus 24 s s plus 9 s into s plus 9 minus 26 s plus 24 then you have one S S square. With that one, the one that we have figured out, it is one zero by S plus three by S plus one. So if we multiply these two, then what we are going to get is So this first parameter will be multiplied by this one, this one will be multiplied by this one, and that this one will be multiplied by this one. So what we are going to have is something like this. S square plus nine S plus 26 is multiplied by one, so it will be keeping as it is. Then one will be multiplied with the, that parameter. So that parameter will be there twice s plus three divided by s plus one. Now in the second case as well, second case, this one will be multiplied by this one, 
this one will be multiplied by this one, and this one will be multiplied by this one. So basically we have minus 24 plus S into twice S plus three divided by S plus one. And then lastly, what we're going to get is this one will be multiplied by this one. This one is multiplied by this one. And finally, this one will be multiplied by this one. So basically minus 24S plus S square into twice S plus three divided by S plus one. And now, if you want to bring the determinant here, then what we'll have our excess is, excess, uh, I'm just uh, avoiding writing the thing again. So I'm just writing excess here. So whatever the adjacent with that one, adjacent SI minus A by determinant SI minus A into x0 plus b u of s. So we can simply, what we do, we can do is, we can write it here. And we can write in this way, one by s cube plus nine s square plus 26s plus 24. Okay, so as you can, as you know that uh, excess is nothing but, excess is nothing but, we have three parameters, isn't it? So basically x1, then we have x2, then we have x3. So what you can say is that this parameter here is our x1, First state variable, then we have x2, this one, and this is actually our x3 third uh, state variable. Okay, so uh, actually it will be more convenient in a conventional way if you want to represent. So say this is our x1s. So what is x1s? x1s is Uh, one by s square s cube plus nine s square plus 26 s plus nine. Then if we just do a bit of simplification of this parameter here, then we, uh, what you're going to get s square plus nine s plus 26 into s plus one, the, uh, okay, plus two s plus three divided by your s plus one. So as you can see that s plus one is actually coming here, multiplying with this one. So let me write the simplified version of it after a bit of calculation. So you just multiply these two and then simplify uh, accordingly. What we're going to get uh, the denominator as well. Uh, the, if you try to find out the solution of this one, you will see that there is three root at two, at three, and at four. So we can write that one as a s plus two, s plus three, s plus four. As well as this one will also come. So s plus one. And if you simplify the thing, then we are going to get is s cube plus 10 s square plus 37 s plus 29. Similarly, if we go about the other ones, x1 s, we'll do same thing, determinant will be there, s cube plus 9s square plus 26s plus uh, 24. I'm sorry about it. It should be 24. 
Okay, then what we have is S into twice S plus three. Minus, okay, can look at it up, okay, minus 24. Minus 24 into S plus one plus twice s plus three divided by s plus one. So the solution, the final location is something like this. Two s square minus 21 s minus 24 and s plus one, s plus two, s plus three, s plus four. Okay, now, X3, X3 is his, this cube plus nine is square plus 26 is plus 24. And then you have minus 24 S is plus one. And you have S plus one plus uh, twice S plus three. Okay, so after simplification, it will be S plus one, S plus two, S plus three, S plus four, and two S cube minus 21s minus 24s. Uh, there are identical parameters. So one s is additional, s is just added. So this is very same thing, same parameter with s being multiplied, that's it. Now we have uh, the figure out uh, what is x1, x2, and x3. Next, our objective is to find out what is our output. So our output is basically, as, as it has been given is y s equal to one one zero with your x s. Now we have one one zero with basically x one s, x two s, and x three s. So you can say that our output is basically x one s plus x2 s because x3 is multiplied with zero. So if we add those two, okay, so if we add those two, then what we are going to get is, the first two we have to add, the denominator is same for all three. So basically we have to just add s cube plus 10 s square plus 37 s plus 29, okay, plus 2s square minus 21s minus 24 divided by s plus 1, s plus 2, s plus 3, s plus 4. Okay, so just uh, do the calculation a bit then what we are going to get is s q plus 10 s square then 16 s then you have 5 29 minus 26 so this is your output equation now output we actually have to see in terms of time domain, what is the solution? Because our input was in the time domain. So input was e to the power minus t. So now we have to see what is the corresponding time domain representation of this output equation, ys. Okay. So we have to go for the partial fraction. So this is basically k1 by s plus one then we have k2 by s plus two, then k3 
two three by s plus two plus k four by s plus four. So we know how to do the uh, partial fraction. So basically, to find out the k one, what we are supposed to do is whatever the whole function y s y s has to be divided by s plus one. And then you have to set s equal to, uh, sorry, uh, it has to be multiplied because we have to actually vanish that parameter, isn't it? So s plus one, then we have to set s equal to minus one. So basically this first parameter will be vanished from the equation. So what we'll have is s cubed plus 10 s square plus 16s plus five divided by s plus two, s plus three and s plus four. So if you set s equal to minus one, so it will be plus one and this will be plus two and this parameter will be plus three. So you just have to multiply those three in the denominator. And now need look at the numerator, minus one. So minus one cube is minus one. So minus square root is plus, it will be become, so it is basically 10. Okay, and then uh, I again, minus one is multiplied with 16, so minus 16, then plus five. So uh, Okay. So what we have here is, Sorry, uh, um, my mistake, this is 12. Okay, so this is basically 12, so this is 12. So now as you can see, if you add, uh, then what you're going to get is minus one and minus 16 is minus 17, and 12 plus five is plus 17. What does it mean is basically K one is zero. So, if k1 is zero, then this parameter is not uh, uh, possible to have. And what it, you know, what is the physical significant of k1 equal to zero is, it means that in the numerator here, you also have s plus one. So basically that s plus one and this s plus one will be canceling each other. That is why this parameter is not present. Okay, let's, uh, let us try to, uh, verify that whether whatever we are saying is true or not. So what we have is S cube plus 12 S square plus 16 S plus five. So let us divide this one with uh, S plus one. So just multiply here with S squared. So it will be S cube plus S square. So it will be 11 s squared, then drop uh, 16s. So now you have to multiply it with basically the 11 s. Okay, so 11 s squared plus 11 s. So as you can see, this is 5s plus 5. Now, if we just give 5 here, then you can see that it will become. 5s plus 5. Okay, it's done. So basically, you can see that uh, this parameter here is completely uh, divisible by your s plus 1. So basically, in the numerator, we have s plus 1, as well as in the denominator, we have s plus 1. So that is why your k1 is becoming 0. So we can actually rewrite our ys as something like this s squared plus 11s plus 5 divided by s plus 2, s plus 3, s plus 4. So there is a simplifying. So you can say that s squared plus 11s plus, uh, sorry, just now uh, we write the partial fraction again. So basically uh, say, you keep you can keep the same or you can be ch change the order again. So it's up to you plus k3 s plus 3 plus k4 s plus 
four. So let us try to figure out what is the values of K1, K2, and K3. <clears throat> so basically K1, uh, sorry, K2 is Ys into your S plus two. So basically what we will have is S squared plus 11S plus five divided by S plus three, S plus four, and then we have to set S equal to minus two. Now, as you can see, S equal to minus two will give you plus one and plus two in the denominator. And the numerator will have minus two square is plus four minus uh, two into 11, that is 22 plus five. Okay. So basically 22 minus uh, nine. Okay, and the denominator is two. So basically, it is uh, 13, 13 by two. So don't forget the sign, minus 13 by two, basically minus 6.5. Similarly, K3 will be S square plus 11 S plus five divided by S plus two, and it's plus four. So S plus three is uh, not there. So now uh, and you have to set S equal to minus three. So now what, this will be basically uh, minus, uh, minus one and this will be plus one. So in the denominator you have a negative parameter, so minus one. And the denominator, uh, a new uh, numerator, we have now minus three between nine minus 33 plus five. So 33 minus uh, four, okay, so 33 minus 14, so basically it will be 19 by one, so minus 19 by minus one, so eventually it is 19. And K4 is, actually you can do it by yourself and just uh, repeat writing is so that uh, it becomes uh, a review for you. Uh, you are supposed to know already the thing. Then S plus two, S plus three. And S has to be minus four. So this is minus one, this is minus two. So minus minus basically plus two into so now here minus 16 uh, plus 16 because square minus 44 plus five. So 44 minus 21 is basically 23. So minus 23 divided by two. So minus 11.5. So what you see here is basically minus 6.5 divided by S plus two plus 19 by S plus three plus uh, minus 11.5 by S plus four. So if we want to see the time response of this one, Take inverse Laplace transformation, eventually it will give you yt equal to minus 6.5 e to the power minus twice t plus 19 e to the power minus 3t and uh, minus, minus 11.5 e to the power minus 40. So this is your required solution of your uh, output equation in the time domain. So the procedure is very, very simple. As I uh, said, this is previously as well. So what you have to do is uh, you have to just keep your patience with a lot of calculation. Eventually, it will not be that complicated. So bottom line is figure out the uh, solution of your equation. Okay, so what is the solution? Solution is excess, you have to find out the excess. 
And once uh, you find out the excess, you put that one in the uh, output equation ys, and then maybe a bit of partial fraction you have to do. And once you have done with the partial fraction, then the uh, last thing that you have to do is figure out uh, the inverse Laplace transformation. You can take help of the table 2.1 and 2 of the NICE's book for this uh, inverse Laplace or Laplace transformation references, okay? So this was uh, your first method. We are supposed to discuss two methods. So this is your first method, uh, Article 4.1. So in the next class, we will try to uh, find out the solution of your state equation in terms of time domain. And uh, that is your Article 4.1. And also I think one of the appendix you have to review a bit. So. And that is also lengthy, so it will not be possible to cover it within this class. So let us see in the uh, next class with that particular solution. Assalamu alaikum.